In this tutorial, we will learn a super easy technique to move your camera like a pro. With 6 degrees of freedom, you can pan your camera, you can move, or zoom, or you can also take a dolly shot, all with one single camera, for any type of composition. We are also going to make it flexible, so that you can change your mind tomorrow and make any adjustment in the camera movement that you may need. So let us start with this scene, where we have added this beautiful Canon. We have downloaded this model from polyhaven.com. And our camera is here. We have also added a simple motion to our Canon, so it makes a movement along the Y-axis. Now, we want the camera to follow the Canon and move slowly along with it, while capturing the scene from various different angles, instead of a still shot. At a basic level, you can think of a follow path constraint here. We covered this in our previous tutorials, first you need a bezier curve. Then a follow path constraint is added to the camera, so that it moves along this curved path, while capturing the scene. But it is not always helpful, it may be useful only for a simple case. There are a couple of drawbacks here. First of all, it may be difficult to create this curve accurately, because it is not easy to visualize how the camera should move, unless you look through the camera. So you can edit the curve multiple times, but a perfect camera path is very difficult to create. Secondly, this approach is not very flexible either. If you change the position of these objects later, or if you want to change the camera behavior for an additional requirement, every time you have to edit this curve for the revised camera path, which is very cumbersome. So we will discuss another similar method which is both easy and flexible, and which I always personally use. Let us first delete this curve, then go to the Add menu, and add one, Bezier Circle. We need to make it little bigger in size, so in the Object Properties, let us change these scale factors to 5. We'll revisit this later. Next, we need to place the camera on this circular path. So in the camera properties, we have to first change these location and the rotation values to zero. Now, go to the object constraint tab and add a follow path constraint. In this target object, we have to select our bezier circle. And the camera will get attached to the circle. Now, if you change this offset value, the camera will change its location on the circle. So you can position it as you need, and the best thing is, you can also keyframe this and animate the camera location. But the camera is now looking downward, we want the camera to look at our target object. So we need to use a track to constraint. We can use the target object directly for the tracking, but it is always better to use an empty for this purpose, because you may want to change the camera focus to some other object during the course of the animation. So let us go to the add menu. We have to add an empty. We can use any of these options. Let us go with the first one. Now select the camera, and in the Object Constraint tab, we have to add one track to constraint. Then scroll down below, and in this target object, we have to select the empty that we have just added. Now the camera is looking at the empty, which is placed at the same location as that of the Canon. And in the Follow Path constraint, we can change this offset value, to change the camera location. It will continue to look at the target object. We can verify this in the camera view mode. The camera is correctly focused at our target object, but we can make it far better. Let us first select the empty object. Then in the object properties, if we change the Z location of the empty, the camera view will also change. This can help us to place the target object in the right position. Similarly, we can also change the other two dimensions. And remember that this is just one of the possible ways how we can control the camera view, there are other ways as well. Let us look into one more use case of this setup, so go back to the perspective view. Here, we can change the size of this bezier circle, and the camera will also move along with this. So in the object properties, we can modify these scale factors. And as we change these values, the camera will move its position accordingly. We can also keyframe this and animate. If we then change the Z location of the circle like this, the camera will move vertically and take a top view of the target object, while still looking at the target or the empty. Let us also verify this in the camera view mode. First, we can change the height of the bezier circle. The camera angle will change along with this. And we can also change the scale factors for the circle, it will change the distance of the camera from the empty or the target. So we can achieve any type of motion by using a suitable combination of all these factors together. And the best thing is, we can animate these values dynamically. It is far better than using a static bezier curve for your camera movement, 
you don't need to edit any curve here. Let's take an example. For our Canon object, we can see that there are some keyframes for its Y location. The Canon moves along the Y axis as per these keyframes. And we want the camera to follow this Canon. So at frame number 200, it has got minus 7, and at frame number 250, this is minus 8. We have to create the same keyframes for the Bezier circle so that it moves along with the Canon. Let's go to the first frame and keyframe the initial value. Then we have to add the same two keyframes to this Bezier circle as that of the moving Canon. Now, the empty also needs to be moved along with the Canon so that the camera looks at the Canon while it moves. But we see that the empty has got an offset of 0.71 in the Y location. Let's try to understand why this is important. The camera focus has shifted this way due to this offset. And this looks better because the barrel of this cannon is projected toward this direction away from its center. So we will keep this offset value. Maybe we can make it just 0.7 for the ease of calculation. This is an advantage of using an empty object instead of using the actual object as the camera target. You can easily move the empty here and there to focus on any particular area as you may need. Let's keyframe this value. Then we have to add the same two keyframes for this empty as that of the cannon, like what we did before. Now the empty and the bezier circle will both move along with the cannon. Let's run this and verify it in action. So the entire set is now moving with the cannon. But we also want the camera to make a simultaneous movement along this curve while moving linearly. Let's go to the first frame. Initially we want to place the camera somewhere here. So go to the Object Constraint tab, and we have to change this offset value to place the camera wherever we want on the Bezier circle. You may wonder how to determine this value. Let us select the Bezier circle and go to this Curve tab. If you expand the section called Path Animation, you'll see a field called Frames. This number determines how much offset means one full rotation along this Bezier circle. Now select the camera again and go back to the Object Constraint tab. We have to keyframe the current offset value for the camera. Now go to the end of the animation. And let's say we want to move the camera somewhere here. So just change this offset value suitably so that the camera comes to our desired position and then keyframe it as well. Everything is set up. Now let us verify this in the camera view mode. If we run this, we will see that the camera moves along with the Canon in two different ways. This looks good but we are still not utilizing the full potential of this method. We can actually do much more than this. For example, we can take a top shot with our camera at the middle of the animation. And we can do that through the Bezier circle. In its object properties, we have to manipulate this Z location value. For frame number 1, let us keyframe the current value. Then say we go to frame number 150. We will change the Z location value to 8 for this frame, so that we get a top shot like this, and we have to keyframe this value here. And along with this, we can also reduce the size of our Bezier circle, so that we get a closer view. So we have to reduce these scale factors. Let us go to the first frame, and keyframe these existing values. Now go back to frame number 150. We can reduce these scale factors together, to get a top view like this. Let's just change it to 4. And we need to ketframe these values as usual. Then we'll go to frame number 250. The Z location can be changed back to 3 with a keyframe. We will increase the size of the Bezier circle, so let us change it to 6.5. I hope you understand that there is nothing specific about the values that we used here, I am just making some random movement of the camera. You can customize these settings for your requirement, this is extremely flexible. I myself use this kind of a camera setup for any animation that I create, I found it very powerful in terms of control, and it is also very easy to maintain. You can also change these rotation values for the Bezier circle, and control the viewing angle of the camera. It can add an extra dimension to your camera movement. Then, if we select the camera, and go to this camera tab, we will get a field called focal length. We can get another kind of zoom in or zoom out effect by changing this field, it is very different than moving our camera physically. So we covered everything that we wanted to discuss in this tutorial. I hope this helps you in managing your camera movement much more effectively. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.